Yeah, I'm sorry. I have again. I told what you. you. Yeah, I know. I told you. Yeah. 1.7 seconds. Yeah. 1.7? Uh, okay. So one revolution, 1 1.7 seconds. <laughs> that seems about right, doesn't it? 1.7? You should take your finger from underneath. So 17 uh, for 10 seconds. Wait, you could, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's try that out. Okay. okay, so now I want you to calculate the speed of the pig in step number 11. You got V equals D over T, 2 pi R. So 2 times pi, which R do we use here? Radius. Which is R? 0.56, right? So V equals 2 pi R over T, 2 pi. 0.56. What was our time? 1.7. Blake? 1.7? One revolution. 1.7. Okay. Give me a speed. Two. It should be? 2.06. 2.06? No. That'd be 2.07, I guess, right? Is that close enough, do you think? Yeah. No, that's so. That's like. That's pretty far off. That's uh, like 0.23 meters. What's the percent that's error? Percent. Step number 12 says compute the percent difference between the value of the speed you know, computed at 9 and measure 11. Use the calculated speed as the known. This is the actual, in other words, the actual speed. So the difference is going to be 2.3 minus 2.07, and we're dividing by 2.07 to get our percent difference. 2.3 minus 100%? And then multiply by 100 to get the percent. Okay, wait, this is yeah, step so we take our we take our formula speed. I got eleven percent. Yeah. Eleven percent? Point one. Okay. Eleven percent difference. How's that, Mr. Smigowski, for error do you think? Is there we did notice him slowing down? We, it did seem like he was slowing down a little bit, yeah. didn't it, right? Um, yeah, what sorts of error are there? Zach, how many marks are up there on the ceiling? <laughs> Like 47. Well, there's three or four, right? It's human so error, but we can't use There's that. certainly been, over the years, there's been a difference in, in the radius, right? That angle, I mean, the, the length of the string has not changed, right? But, and our timing was probably within couple certainly a tenth of a second, right? Yeah. So the number one source of error is what? The line, the radius. Because this radius, right? It's, it's pretty challenging to measure that, that radius. I think 11% is pretty close. Okay, I guess we could, Mr. Smigowski suggested getting the, the iPad and doing this. I could actually mark up a meter up there. We could actually, with the slow motion camera, we could probably get a more accurate um, yes. radius, right? Probably. What would it have to be to get closer to, although I guess we use the same R here as we used here, and right? Also, like, where is our radius? Is there in the middle of it? Well, that's true, right? And you have to uh, use the same, yeah. I guess we'd use the same number there, though. Yeah. We'll kind of tap on me, right? Although the error is more pronounced here because the R is actually part of that thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I think 11% is pretty good. Okay, so post lab analysis, what techniques for measuring R and theta would you recommend for best results? Do you think we got the best possible result we could? The only thing we have to do better is come up with a better way of measuring the radius, and I haven't really been able to come up with one over the years. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't worry about it. Try, attempt, uh, best results, we should improve the radius measurement, I think, right? Could we come up with a better method for the angle? I guess I could take a picture, right? Take a picture and then find, and we could actually put a protractor on that. We could probably get a better better angle there, we'll pick with a camera, possibly, he's got some ideas. What do you conclude about the magnitude of the string tension compared with the weight of the pig? Now this we haven't talked about. The string tension compared with the weight of the pig. For uniform circular motion, the tension will always be less than, the same as, or greater than the weight. If there's, is it the same? The weight of the pig, right now the tension in the string is equal to the weight of the pig, right? What about when it's out here? Well, the tension will be greater. How comes that? Uh, You're right. Look at the diagram up there. What what equals mg? Ty. Ty. So the t has to be smaller than 
the hypotenuse has to be greater than the side, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. So the tangent has to be greater than the weight of the pig, right? And in fact, if the angle is even more, Cody, right? Like if the angle is even more, then the tension becomes greater. even greater. It's the same idea with that force equilibrium stuff that we did. I want you. That sucks. So the tension will always be greater than. What can you conclude about the direction of the net force that keeps the flying pig in uniform circular motion? Which direction is the net force? Towards the center. Towards the center of the circle. Question number four. For uniform circular motion, the centripetal force will always be less than, the same as, or greater than the tension in the string. The centripetal force, which is less in our diagram Tx, is always going to be less than the tension in the string. What? Less than. Less than. Why? Why? Because the centripetal force is the Tx, right? Okay. Yeah. It's a component of T. What if your angle is how does the pig overcome air friction? I don't know how he does it, but apparently his wings, his delicate wings, somehow, magically, they must just sort of push the air out of the way. I don't really know how it works, but it definitely works better when the wings are going. And it's cool to watch. List sources of air. There is going to be some air resistance, right? The radius, yeah, we didn't get a very good. The radius and, and in, uh, in part, the angle. Okay, so there you go. There is Bob the Flying Pig. No, just for fun. Just a class activity. Cool. All right, so I will give you the rest of the period to do some work. We will talk about bank curves tomorrow or Monday.